Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another inks comparison video and this is pink inks comparison number two. So I think with that, let's go and swab up some of these inks. So I get a lot of questions on how I do these ink videos. So I decided I would add this to the front of each of the ink videos. I put links in the descriptions, but I know some of you watch this on TVs or mobile devices, so you don't get to see this. So first off, the paper is the number one question I get asked. What paper do I use for these ink comparison videos? So this is the original Tomoe River. This is 52 GSM and it is the white, not the cream, the white. Where possible, I try to go for the white because the cream can actually change the color of the ink just a little bit. So this is Tomoe River 52 GSM in the white. Um, a lot of people get confused as well because I have what looks to be a grid on this page and it's actually an Oxford Optic pad. These are the pads that I actually use when I'm writing my uh, writing samples for pen reviews or in my currently ink. So they have these little squares up here. Uh, I just use that because it's a good guide for me. When I put this very thin sheet of Tomoe River over, I can actually see squares. So it helps me write a little bit sort of straight uh, on the page. Not always, but sometimes it does. The, the other thing that I also have is a I have a bottle of water, plain water, and uh, I dip my nib in here. So for consistency, I use the same fountain pen, or <laughs> I guess it's not a fountain pen. It's using a fountain pen nib, though. This is a 3D printed pen from William Shakur in the UK. So he prints this uh, material 3D and it has a number eight size Bok nib which I can unscrew and you can see there so it is just a dip pen holder for a number eight size Bok nib and the idea is I want to have consistency with the writing sample so I use this I dip it in the ink uh, I write and then I will dip it in here and I will rinse the nib off several times and I will dry it. And then at that point, uh, I will then go on to do the next ink swatch and the next writing sample. So there you have it. That's uh, how I do my ink swatches. So I just wanted to show you uh, that here. Now on to the ink comparison video. The first ink I have here on this inks comparison video is diamine cobble so i think let's do an ink swatch and you're going to see here that this is a very very uh sort of lovely corally pink color and this is uh, i find it a little bit on the dry side uh and you can see that there towards the end i'm going to do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. And this is diamine. And it is coral. But this is actually quite a nice pink ink. Uh, if you want a very sort of coral-like pastel colored pink, then this is definitely the one to go for. The next ink here is a Diamine Cerise. We'll do another ink swatch here. And I would definitely say that this is more of what I would normally call a pink color. And you can actually see quite a difference between that and the coral. Although the coral is quite a nice color, but it's more of an orangey pink. We'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a uh, wet or a uh, broad or a dry or a narrow writing nib. So this is Diamine Cerise. But that is quite a lovely pink. 
the next ink uh, has actually spilt a little bit on the label. Uh, this is a Noodler's ink and it is Atlantic Salmon. So we'll do an ink swatch. And here we can see that we're starting to get a little bit more into darker pinks. And again, this is a very nice pink. We'll do a second pass over the top half, and that will just show the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a fine writing nib. And this is Noodlers. And it's Atlantic Salmon. But this is another lovely pink ink that I do like using. I haven't actually used a lot of this ink. Um, I do still have quite a full bottle actually, uh, but it is an ink that I have used on a number of occasions and do like a lot. The next ink is Pelican, Edelstein and it's Star Ruby. We'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is actually getting a little bit more onto a reddish pink or a pinkish red. I still look at it as being a pink, although it's a little bit more on the darker side, uh, more redder side. I, I'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet or broad or dry or a narrow writing nib. And this is a pelican. Edelstein and it is Star Ruby but that is uh, certainly one of my all-time pinks that I I do use a lot and I am actually down to um, I want to say about half a bottle now and uh, the last ink here is Diamine Shimmertastic Pink Glitz. Now, the reason why it's glitzy is because it has a lot of pinkish gold, sort of rose gold particulate there. So I'm going to shake this bottle a little bit just to try and get rid of that particulate into the ink. And hopefully you can see it there. Beautiful color. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, again, although this is a pink, it is a little bit more on the, maybe a little bit the orange side, the salmon side of pink. Now, we'll do a second pass over the top half just to show the difference between a wet or a broad or a dry or a fine writing nib. So this is Diamine, uh, Shimmertastic. I'm just going to call it Shimmer Pink Glitz. But I can already see uh, the, the lovely particulate there. So I think let's take a look at these inks now that they have dried. So the first ink here is Diamine Coral. And it is a pink, although it's a little bit more on... Uh, an orangey side of pink, uh, a little bit more pastel-like as well. Uh, can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? It's a little bit difficult, and I do find this a lot on pastel-coloured inks, is that there is very little difference between what would be a wet or a dry writing nib, or a broad or a finer writing nib. Obviously, with a, a finer writing nib, you're going to put down a, a narrower line uh, than a broad writing nib. But other than that, it's very difficult to see the difference. Now, is there any shading? Um, there is a little bit, and I'll show you here, a little bit around the pulled areas, but not a huge amount of shading there. Um, is there any sheen? Uh, no, there isn't. But typically, in most cases, you don't normally see a sheen on a pink ink or certainly a lighter pink ink. The next ink here is Diamine Cerise and can you detect the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? You definitely can. There is quite a difference in contrast there between the wet and the dry. Uh, is there any shading going on? 
uh, let me show you here close up. There is a little bit like around the pooled areas, but not a lot really compared to other inks. Now, is there any sheen? Uh, there really isn't any sheen, and I'm not seeing anything on the writing sample there either. Now, the next ink is a Noodler's ink, and it's Noodler's Atlantic Salmon. And you'll notice there's still areas of this that's still trying to dry. And I have had this with a lot of Noodler's inks. Uh, Apache Sunset is one of them, is that on certain paper, sometimes Temerary River, you can find that still uh, a day or two later, it hasn't actually fully dried. Um, so this will take a little bit longer to dry. Now, can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib or a broad and a narrow writing nib? You definitely can. There, again, is a, a definitive difference between the two. Is there any shading? Uh, yes, again, you can see it there in the pooled areas uh, and also the wetness there. Is there any sheen? Um, no, there is not. But this is almost what I would call a hot pink. It's a, a very nice pink. And I have to say it, it is a pink that I like using. Although for some reason, I don't use it as much as I should. Uh, I typically, uh, my go-to pink ink is Diamine Amaranth. The next ink here is a Pelican Edelstein and it's Star Ruby. Can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib or a broad and a narrow writing nib? You can, yes, it, there is definitely a difference there. Is there any shading? Uh, I would say yes, around the pooled area, there is shading going on. Now, is there sheen? Well, you can probably see that there. I I can definitely see it. There is some gold sheen going on around the pooled area. Um, I'm not seeing it, though, on the writing sample. So although I do see it in the pooled area there, when you put a lot of ink on the page, you're still not seeing it on the writing sample. And then the last ink on this ink comparison is Diamine Shimmertastic Pink Glitz. Can you see the difference between a wet and a dry writing nib? Yes, you can. You can definitely see a difference in color between the two there. Is there shading going on? Um, yes, I would say around the pooled area. You can see some shading there. Uh, is there sheen? Um, there isn't really sheen, but there is a lot of shimmer. And you can see that sort of like rose gold, uh, pinkish gold shimmer on that. And you can also see it in the writing sample. So if you like a pink ink and you like a glittery ink, then Diamine Shimmertastic Pink Glitz might be the ink that you want to check out. So that's my pink inks comparison number two video. If there are any inks here that you like, do let me know in the comments below. And likewise, if there are any other pink inks you think I should check out, do let me know in the comments below. So this is my Pink Inks comparison number two video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.